Hi, everyone. I'm Todd Rossnagel, Director of Communications for the Louisiana Conference. Thanks so much for joining us. We wanted to give you a quick update on Hurricane Laura as Hurricane Laura is approaching the coast of Louisiana uh, right near Lake Charles. In about uh, the last 15 hours, Hurricane Laura has gone from a Category 1 to a very strong Category 4 hurricane. Um, all hurricanes are dangerous. There's no question about that. About that. Uh, this one is really dangerous. Sustained winds of 140 miles an hour. Storm surge is going to be forecast to be at least 30 miles inland. And it could be um, a Category 1 hurricane by the time it reaches Shreveport. Uh, so we're in store for a rough couple of days in Louisiana. And we wanted to bring in some... Uh, some faces, some voices from around the connection of areas um, that are hard hit. We will get to all of those introductions uh, in just a moment, but I wanted to first invite Bishop Cynthia Fierro Harvey, who is joining us, uh, to give us a word and, and, uh, and open us up. Bishop Harvey? Uh, well, I'm just grateful that we can gather uh, you uh, around these squares uh, right now. I don't, I, I'm not even sure exactly where all of you are. I'm just hoping that you're, those of you from Lake Charles area are not in Lake Charles area, but you'll update us on that uh, in a while. Um, I am sitting in Baton Rouge and I keep moving around um, the Episcopal residents uh, as we get keep getting tornado warnings uh, here ourselves. So um, I'm just in prayer. I have been over these last few days and uh, not only for those of you in these squares, but those who are not here, uh, who are probably busily getting to the next place of safety. I'm just grateful that in Louisiana, uh, two things that we know how to do this. Uh, we're resilient people. And that all, we also know how to take care of one another. Uh, I think that's what I keep hearing more and more is that many of you have already been in conversation with your colleagues and, and your laity and, and I am really, really grateful for that. Um, I know that um, this, this format is, is just sort of interesting to try to stay updated with one another. And, and this is going to be one of many updates that we'll be having over the next few days. And uh, I just mostly want folks to know that um, you're all in my prayers. And I think we're all going to feel some impact from this storm as it gets bigger and bigger. Um, and certainly Lake Charles will get the brunt of it. But I think the rest of us are going to feel uh, the effects of Laura and all the way from uh, New Orleans to Shreveport. So we just need to be um, be in support and in prayer for one another. And I, I also remind us that this is when we're at our best. This is when the connection is at its best, uh, is when we uh, take care of one another, reach out to one another, care for one another in extraordinary ways. So I'm grateful to all of you already uh, for what you have done and uh, we'll continue to pray and hope that we can remain connected uh, in some way um, in this next few days, in these next few hours, uh, because I, I know it's going to be an interesting, an interesting 72 hours or so and then some. Thank you for those words, Bishop Harvey. Um, let's go to Reverend Elaine Burley, Office of Missional Outreach and Engagement. Um, uh, Elaine, if you could give us an update on uh, what you're forecasting. Uh, I know it's too early to talk about the response to this storm until the storm passes, but give us an update if you could. Well, Todd, it looks like this storm is going to impact most, if not all, of the state of Louisiana. Coastal flooding from New Orleans to Lake Charles, and then the storm tracks north along the Texas-Louisiana border, all the way to Arkansas and beyond. And as you said, it's going to remain at least a category one hurricane throughout. Um, we just received word for the National Weather Center, the National Hurricane Center, that the storm surge in Lake Charles is unsurvivable. So I pray that people have gotten out of harm's way. But what I know is that so much of Louisiana is going to sustain damage from this storm. We are preparing to address that storm damage in every part of the state. We've identified assets and I have been in contact with my colleagues, other disaster response coordinators from around the connection and they are offering to come help and to send resources that we might need. 
we are much better prepared than we were 15 years ago when Hurricane Katrina and Rita hit, but we still need the prayers of everyone. We're hoping as soon as the storm passes that we will be allowed to survey the damage. As soon as the emergency personnel let us into those areas, we will be boots on the ground doing windshield assessments so we can figure out where best to deploy our assets. And it's it's going to be uh, it's going to be very interesting to see uh, how uh, we respond to a storm with social distancing. But we will get there at some point down down the road. Um, I wanted to bring in Reverend Carly Pigeon, who's the district superintendent of the Lake Charles district. Um, uh, Carly, um, what is your first of all? Just kind of give us a sense for how the district is coming together. Yeah, so, you know, our district is kind of divided north and south just because of the span of, of what, you know, we kind of stretch from Alexandria all the way down to the coast of Lake Charles. And so I've been reaching out to kind of all of the pastors kind of in that bottom Cameron Parish, Calcasieu Parish area. Um, and for just about everyone is out. And I, you know, I had some folks last night that were saying, oh, I might ride it out. And then this morning I, I checked in again and they're like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm on the road. And I said, oh, you know, praise God. And so for the most part, everyone is out. Um, they are, they've already checked on their people. They've prepared their churches and, and are set up, um, you know, preparing for the worst, but hoping for the best. Um, and so we are ready. Um, Reverend Lewin Wattel is our district coordinator who also is ready and if, if, if we couldn't have a better person to be our district coordinator in this area for, for such a time as this. And so we are, you know, praying and, and prepared and just waiting for God to, to, to move it on through so we can get in and, and, and do the work that we need to do. Carly, thanks. Um, uh, Reverend Van Stinson uh, joins us as well, the assistant to the bishop. Um, Van, we talk all the time about uh, the connection of the United Methodist Church. You heard about the connection in the Lake Charles District. This is, as Bishop Harvey said earlier, this is really when the church, specifically the United Methodist Church, is really at its strongest. Well, absolutely. And, you know, I oftentimes see the, uh, the, it's the State Farm insurance commercial that tends to be looping on and on. You know, the, the first to arrive and the last to leave. There's just that sort of phrasing and you know, we've used similar phrases over the years, but, you know, I, I, those who have, have communicated that the connection is never more visible than in times of crisis. When we mobilize assets, uh, people, um, uh, resources, both financial and, you know, just prayers that come up from all around. I mean, I'm sure I'm not the only one who's received texts or uh, emails or phone calls from people all over the connection who are just you know, in solidarity with us, even from a distance, certainly preparing for the ways in which after the storm passes, uh, they can be engaged and involved in a much more direct way. So, you know, it, it's been exciting to see um, the limited resources that we have in terms of conference staff just amp up their game a bit in the last sort of several days. Um, and certainly watching um, Elaine mobilize her crew that that just, you know, can't wait to, to grab a chainsaw and go help somebody. You know, it's as, it's as raw and real as, as a guy who just can't wait to grab his chainsaw and go help somebody. Um, it's those who are mobilizing financial resources, those who are working behind the scenes to set up the mechanisms, you know, where folks can actually get their resources to the places of greatest need in the fastest way possible. Um, I was reflecting as you were talking about this, you know, 15 years ago, you know, preparing for what was coming, a, a similar <laughs> level of anxiety, and our level of technology and engagement then was a, a, a scratchy voicemail that came over the, the phone that you couldn't hear half of it, but it was the bishop sending a word out to all of the clergy and people and you know, you pick it up and you listen, and, and, and it was almost like needing to translate what was going on and, and how far we've come in terms of our capacity to communicate, to mobilize resources, but how vulnerable we still are. Mm -hmm. And so there's just that juxtaposition. But, um, you know, folks have been active uh, at work behind the scenes, putting the mechanisms in place so that once we 
uh, figure out what is needed most, um, we can mobilize those resources and get them to those places of need. Thank you for that, Van. I remember the very first text message that I sent was in the midst of Hurricane Katrina. I had no idea what I was doing, um, but it was the only way to communicate with people. It was brand new technology and it was there for us. So let's get to some folks who are um, both kind of in the area and churches who are in the area. Um, I want to start with Reverend Andy Goff, who is joining us from Baton Rouge, but Welsh Memorial in Vinton um, is a church. Uh, Andy, I am, I am sure that they have a history um, of knowing these storms, even back in 2016 um, with the flooding and, and also with um, Hurricane Harvey, uh, there was some flooding in that area. What are you hearing from the folks on the ground? We are bracing ourselves in Vinton and also in the Sulphur area as we anticipate uh, Laura's uh, unfortunate arrival uh, this evening. Um, my folks in Vinton especially are uh, very much uh, concerned and likening this to Rita back in 2005. Um, even though they've gone through Harvey in 2017, uh, they still have images and memories of Rita. And so we're uh, even saying to, uh, from the reports we're receiving that this might be worse than Rita for our area. So the, the, it's real uh, for us and we're just bracing and praying that um, it won't be what we're uh, anticipating it's, it's going to be. Thank you, Andy. Uh, Reverend Lorraine Wattell, who's the district coordinator, also joins us. Uh, Lorraine, I know you have uh, so much experience um, with responding to storms. Um, and I, as, I, as I understand it, um, uh, you are, you're holding, you're, hold, you're just north of Lake Charles, correct? Right, uh, about 60 miles. Yep, and so give us your thoughts as you prepare for this storm. Uh, well, one thought is, what am I doing here? <laughs> but, um, you know, uh, actually, it, it's been great working with this congregation. Uh, they have just such a passionate heart. Um, we have been so busy helping so many people in the community still getting set up, making gener sure generators are working, all those different things. Uh, we've already been working with the EOC here. Uh, we're going to be a secondary shelter for the city, uh, probably post uh, Hurricane Laura. And, um, you know, and if for some reason they don't need us, which I'm going to be shocked if they don't, uh, you know, we're going to be available for ERTs uh, also. Uh, and part of that is making also use of the Wesley campus that we have received, you know, from the trustees of the conference. Um, but the reality is this is a very dangerous storm. Um, the high winds are, are going to be astronomical. Um, the damage we're expecting from fallen trees, fallen branches, uh, I think is going to be pretty horrendous. Um, as I was taking my last drive around town and kind of checking on some things, I couldn't help but find myself thinking, you know, not only praying, but thinking about what's still going to be here, what's not, what's going to be heavily damaged. Um, so it, it seems like a lot of DeRitter has chosen to stay. We have had uh, a heavy flow of traffic that has left uh, Cameron, Lake Charles, up through our area. Um, so it's it's been a, a steady stream of, you know, traffic here. So, you know, our main thing is just making sure everybody's educated and knows what to do as far as having water and everything else and being safe where they're at if they're choosing to stay. Thank you, Lorraine. Um, uh, Reverend John Robert Black joins us as well. Um, St. Luke Simpson located in Lake Charles. Um, and John Robert Black, I don't, I don't believe you are in Lake Charles. You have gone north. Give us your update. Yeah, I mean, the update is um, we're scared. <laughs> um, and when Andy said worse than Rita, uh, that's, 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 a, that's tough. And uh, we're all scared. Um, but, um, but, but 
our folks are strong, Todd. Um, they've been an inspiration to me and, you know, um, we know, I mean, we know unequivocally God is going to get us through this. Uh, Jesus walked on the water. He's going, he's going to walk on the storm with us and we're going to, we're going to come through this stronger. And it's just, it's just that persistence and that willingness to fight and get up off the mat. And, uh, but it's scary. Uh, the main thing is just, it's in, it's in time to be a hero, to be tough, you know, get out of town, take the advice of the experts and, um, and, and then, and then get to work. Um, and, um, you know, get to work. The people of Southwest Louisiana are pretty phenomenal. And, um, and St. Luke Simpson is a very special church. It has been long before I got there. Uh, they've done this. They, they know what they're doing and they, um, they are deeply United Methodist. Um, they will break their back and host people and we'll be ready to go. Um, there's no doubt there. And so it's, uh, but uh, pulling out and seeing the church you love uh, with a huge cloud over it and then kissing your wife goodbye and grabbing the kids and the animals and leaving, not sure what you're going back to. That's a new experience for me. I've always responded to these. I've never lived through one. So it's tough, uh, but we'll be ready to go. We just got to, and God will get us through it. Absolutely. Uh, Juan Huertas joins us from Homa, and literally as we are recording this Wednesday, almost three o'clock, um, those bands are really coming through the Homa area. If you look at radar, um, Juan, what what is the update from Homa? I know. I read where over 400 coastal gates just south of New Orleans have been closed. So it is going to be a significant event all the way uh, along the entire Louisiana coast. Uh, good afternoon to you and give us your update from Homa. Good afternoon. We began to see the winds and the rain around one o'clock this afternoon. And now as I look out, we're having a little bit of a break, uh, but then the winds come pretty strongly. Uh, within the city of Homa, we, we hope to be okay. The levee system that has been built has been very helpful for us. Uh, but uh, beyond uh, these levees down the bayou, especially our Dulac community that we know so well, and those communities are gonna see huge storm surge. And so we are just hunkering down. Um, the winds and gusts have gotten pretty strong at times and the rain. Um, I'm here at the parsonage a few blocks away from the church and we're literally just watching, encouraging folks to stay home and really, really in prayer and thought with our Lake Charles folks. Um, our community knows what that's like. We've lived through many of these before. And so we are going to kind of go through this, but also be ready to mobilize, not just for our community, for the South Southwest Louisiana community also, uh, but pray for us in these uh, first few hours because we are going to feel feel the the rage of this storm even as far east as we are. Thank you, Juan. Um, I know that hurricane watches and warnings are going off literally as all of us are gathered around the screen. So I think um, that is a sign that our time uh, must come to an end. But uh, Bishop Harvey, I wanted to maybe um, end with you, if you could give us a final word and maybe uh, pray us out. Um, you know, John Robert, I, I, I think about, um, and Lorraine, you both alluded to this, that as you drive around and um, you leave your church or you leave your place, you don't know what you're gonna come back to, or what you're gonna find or not find. Um, that's just a heartbreaking thought. A heartbreaking thought um, and as important as some of these structures are uh, we all uh, I think even especially after this whole COVID experience have learned that our buildings um, are just buildings uh, you know that old we are the church you are the church you know um, I think that more than ever before I know for me that I'm learning that the spirit um, of God is so very present in the people in the communities that that we have the privilege to serve and so as hard as it is to um, drive away from those special holy places 
uh, we realize that God is with us. Um, God is with us and um, promised to never leave us or forsake us. And uh, I, I, you know, I just go back to nothing can separate us from the love of God and not a hurricane, not a tornado, not anything. And that's because um, that is that is our DNA. That is who we are. That is what we believe as people of faith. And so during this time, that's, you know, it, and Todd is right, as we've been talking, I've already gotten, I think it's tornado alert number four. And um, so we're just, we're just going to brace ourselves and do what we do, uh, knowing that God is with us. So if I can offer a prayer, um, as feeble as it might be at this point. Uh, gracious God, um, we gather uh, around this table, knowing that you are with us, that you are with us. These are difficult times, times of more unknown, uh, as if we can handle any more. Yet we know that we can because of your presence among us, that you stir among us and in us and all around us. So I just ask you now for a triple layer of protection uh, around our churches and our pastors and our communities that we have the great privilege to serve. God, you've called us for this time. And uh, we are resilient people. We are the people of Louisiana. We are the people who understand the power, not only the power of water and wind, but we know your power, the power of your Holy Spirit that constantly stirs, stirs among us. So be with us this day, be with us in the days ahead protect our places, protect our people, protect our families, and protect those first responders that are preparing at this very moment to rush into, again, unknown. Uh, so we ask you to, to be with them. And be with those that, uh, while some of us can go to a place and find shelter, we know that there are those who have no shelter right now. Uh, who live on the streets, who don't have family to go to, that don't have a friend whose home uh, they can go crash in. Pray. We pray for them. We pray for the most vulnerable. For this, we pray in your name. Amen.